Well, hello, friends, and welcome back to the Mountain Prevail Knife Shop. I'm Jesse, and it's just a rainy Saturday, and I'm in the shop today. Um, cleaning up some of my new wingman knives, just doing the final sand and uh, all that stuff on, and uh, let me show you this one. This one is pretty much done. This is my wingman knife and the new uh, ambidextrous sheath, horizontal sheath that we're doing for them now. There it is. This one is just a, uh, this one we got a custom handle. Just some natural coyote G10. But, uh, anyways, I'm working on this one now. This is some stabilized curly maple with red G10 liners. And this one's still a little, little dirty, got a little epoxy residue and dust and stuff on it. I hadn't done, this is just how, how it is, um, right off of the grinder when I'm, uh, slack sanding. So... The whole point of today's video is I've been watching uh, my friend Dustin at the Art of Craftsmanship channel. I've been watching his live feed and uh, he gave me some good advice on you know how to uh, grow a small channel and get past that uh, first 1,000 uh, subscriber hurdle. So, uh, and then, you know, kind of boils down to just put out some content. And uh, I'm in the shop all the time, so maybe I just need to just film stuff just put it out there for you so doing this today in attempts to just get some content out there um and i guess good time because i'm i'm experimenting with something brand new today so on the stabilized wood you know i usually sand this stuff up to at least like 2000 grit i'll like wet sand it or wet sand it with uh most of the time i sand it with wd-40 and where it's stabilized, this stuff won't take no oil, it won't take no finish uh, when, when you're done. And sometimes I can't, I can't never get like the real brilliant shine that I want when it's, uh, when, it's when, I, when I'm done with it. So um, I, I think what I've been lacking all along is, uh, you know, some knowledge in like buffing and how to like what uh, specific compounds to use with what. Uh, certain pads on the buffing wheel to uh, really get the shine that I'm looking for out of these. So I'm gonna take you along and we're gonna experiment together today. Be right with you. All right, so as I was saying a while ago, um, I usually sand up to 2000 grit. Uh, I was talking with my friend, Zach Gulker from uh, the Burl Bank. And speaking of, I just picked up this sweet set a box elder burl from him. Check him babies out. Look at that grain for days. Orange and black dyed. These are gonna look awesome on something. Anyway, um, I was asking him or talking with him about um, you know how to how to get that shine and stuff I'm really looking for. So he gave me some good uh, information. So thanks Zach and I'm gonna try it today. So instead of um, hand sanding this thing up to like 2,000 grit, 3,000 grit sometimes, he said what he does is sands to like 400 grit and then uses two different compounds on the buffing wheel. So I'm going to try that today. But I'm going to cheat a little bit. I got some 800 grit paper here. And... When I'm, when I'm using the slack belt on these things, I'm kind of rolling everything over. It scratches the spine and the tang. So when I get done um, with the slack belt, I usually go back to a small wheel and go up to like 400 grit and clean those lines back up, as you can see. So, um, and, and it, it puts a little bit of a flat across that there so like I say I'm gonna take a little bit of 800 grit here real quick and just uh, 
kind of bring that even those lines up. Then we'll go down downstairs and uh, see how those new compounds work. Got a little leather pad here. And when I'm sanding, I don't roll the knife around on the wood and dirty up and, and scar up the wood. I use, always use a little leather pad there to sand on. Just some old scrap I use. Like I say, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do much with it. I'm gonna try the process like he says, like Zach told me. And uh, we're going to see how it goes. Hopefully, it'll work good and it will save me boatloads of time on finishing all these knives. And I'll get a better end product. So that's what we're looking for. In the production business, you're always looking for speed, right? Speed without sacrificing quality. That's the key for me. Quality first. Quality first, but at the end of the day, I'm in this to make money, so time is money. So you gotta get them done in a timely manner, right? All right, I won't bore you with no more of this. I'm gonna hit it here for just another minute and I'll bring you back when I go down to the buffing wheel. Okay, I got two compounds. <laughs> they come from knifeandgunfinishingsupplies.com, better known as K&G. And, and I'm pretty sure it's the same K&G that does like all the professional wood stabilizing. Same people, two different companies, two different websites, I think. All right. Two different compounds I got. And my God, I thought I was getting just a little chunk of compound, but at least that's it. Bricks. They ship them in Walmart bags, but that looks hilarious. Anyway, this is the white diamond. And this is the pink no scratch. So my man said use the white diamond first on the sole wheel and the pink no scratch on the soft wheel, so let's give it a whirl. And like I say, I am a uh, inexperienced buffer. Like, I mean, I don't know a lot about it. I've had a couple of buffers for years, but I ain't really done enough of it to learn, you know, about all the compounds and such. I buff all my knives a little bit when I get them done, but to be honest, I've been doing it kind of dry. Maybe that's useless, I don't know. It does seem to put a little bit of a sheen on like the, uh, the more of the, uh, resins like on the pine cone handled knives and stuff I do but um at any time I've ever tried to use a uh a buffing compound or a rouge whichever you call it I've just had like the old cheap crap from like Lowe's and it's it's trash so I'm hoping this like really works out awesome easy and uh, really puts a magnificent shine on the scales be right back all right here we go I always tape up my knives after I get them, um, or before I put the handles on. And I use like a paper towel or a shop towel, soaked in uh, like WD-40. Then I wrap some blue tape around it. So don't never try to buff without some covering edge because these things will grab and jerk. And this knife's stupid sharp at this point and it'll catch you up. So safety first, tape it up. All right, white diamond compound. And I don't know how much to put on there, so I'm just going to do something. Oh, yeah. A lot on there.
I'll tell you, it's already shiny as crap. So my first initial uh, 20 seconds of this, I'm thinking it's going to be the ticket. Now, there's the side I have not buffed. And there's what I just buffed. Look at that shine. Already pretty good. So, hopefully, that uh, little bit of black crap I rub off. Do I need more? Why not? Maybe that's too much. I don't know. We're learning this together. Right in there beside the blade, really good. So far, so good. I like it. Look at that 3D curly maple. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, man. All right, we'll move, move the camera and uh, we'll go on to the uh, other compound. All right, here we are to the other side. I'm gonna try this uh, pink no scratch compound. Stuff seems really dry on a loose wheel. Sorry if the camera angle is weird. This is a little bit awkward. Again, I don't know how much to put on there. It's gonna put a lot. If this does half as good as the other side did, I'm gonna be pumped. What do you think? Pretty daggone good. I'll take it. I will take it.
Yes, sir. Look at that shine. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. All right, be right back. Okay, there it is. That was so easy. It's kind of like I had an aha moment. I needed a good aha moment. I ain't had one in a while. But that, I mean, this took all of four and a half minutes probably to to do. Like I say, I'm just learning, but man, that's the best finish I've had on any of my wood handled knives so far. So here on my side, I've got Wingman number one. It's a little, I did a flat grind on this one. This is the uh, very first original one. And this is unstabilized um, Brazilian ironwood. So we'll see what it does to it. All right, not bad at all. This is probably a bad example because this is like I say, number one of my wingman knife. And I've carried this one on my side every day for a couple months now probably and just uh, intentionally beating the crap out of it. So you can see it's kind of dented and scratched up and beat up and whatnot. But she's shiny now. <laughs> so, I don't know why I put my glasses back on. But anyway, yeah, man, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. That went well. That went well. And um, this was just a central machine. This is a Harbor Freight, like a $50 buffing outfit. So, I mean, that's pretty... It's about as cheap as it's going to get them as far as uh, they're going to uh, buffer. So, yeah, that's well worth it. Well worth it. And those compounds, man, like one was $12 and the other one was 6 And I thought the $6 one was going to be little, but they're both those big, huge bars that you can see. And I would imagine they'll last for a long time. So, win. Win for the Mountain Prevail shop. Come on. Okay, guys. There it is. One finished wingman, curly maple, and a red G10. And custom sheath, horizontal, ambidextrous, with a red thread to match the uh, liners. Because that's the way we roll. All right, guys. Thanks for joining for this short and sweet video as we learn to buff, stabilize wood together. Y'all have a great weekend. Catch you next time.